Occasionally, I'll receive questions that say, uh, Roman, you're teaching us to, on one hand, uh, not be nice, not be people pleasing, uh, not doing the most for people, but on the other hand, you're saying be kind, be generous, be meek, mild, humble, flexible, gentle. This seems like a contradiction. How can we not be nice, but at the same time be kind, mild, gentle? When we have two opposing ideas, it can create a very uncomfortable sensation in the brain that is described as cognitive dissonance. It was F. Scott Fitzgerald that said, the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. Cognitive dissonance is defined as a state of mental discomfort that arises when holding two conflicting beliefs. Our minds like things to be simple. It takes energy to think of complex things or to hold uh, two opposing beliefs or concepts in the mind simultaneously. It just takes energy. And if we're not used to analyzing things, uh, then it becomes all the more difficult to hold two seemingly opposing ideas or beliefs at the same time. It creates a dissonance, a discomfort, a clashing in the mind. And so what can we do if we have this discomfort or we feel uncomfortable in our minds with these two opposing thoughts? Well, what we commonly do is we find ways to rationalize to make them more simple. And so the simple mind will choose an extreme, an either or. So my mom is mean to me, but my mom tells me she loves me. So my mom loves me, or she says she does, but she's also mean to me. And so what many trauma survivors will do is find themselves rationalizing and choosing what emotionally feels right to them, which is my mom loves me, and now they're dealing with over here this opposing thought of, well, my mom is mean to me. And so they rationalize and say, well, she had her trauma. Or, well, she's going through a lot right now. Or, well, uh, she's really busy at work and she was just stressed. Or she didn't mean that. Or that's just her way of showing love. Does any of that sound familiar? Trauma-bonded, trauma survivors are constantly rationalizing their relationships and it's cognitive dissonance that causes them to do this. Again, that's a discomfort of being able to hold these two opposing thoughts. He abuses me and uses me and manipulates me, but he's everything I ever wanted in a man physically. So he's everything I wanted, but he's the worst thing I, I could have ever imagined. He's, he's worse than I could have imagined. How do we... How do we harmonize? How do we hold these two thoughts? Well, it creates so much discomfort in the brain that the brain just tends to switch over to one emotionally. And since this one feels better or this one feels better, that he's your dream man, then you let go of the fact that he's abusive and manipulative and you rationalize it. Well, my dad was the same way. Well, he probably had a rough childhood. No one ever showed him love. Perhaps I can love him out of this and help him to be better. And so we tend to idealize, put someone on a pedestal, or devalue someone, which is just to toss them to the curb like they're nothing. But that extreme thinking is exactly what keeps us getting traumatized again and again and again as we make decisions that are not sophisticated and that are not purpose-driven. And so we need to take the time to pull out our pen and paper and analyze situations in life that seem to have two opposing aspects to them. Because someone who takes the time to analyze according to purpose will look at a mean mom and they will say, well, she's mean, but she may love me, but she's mean. 
and we can't lose this. We have to accept this fact as well as this fact. And when this fact exists, that she is mean, that she is abusive, then this may mean that I have to go low contact or no contact. That's a thinking analytical brain that's not on a trauma bond. Or with the abusive husband or boyfriend, the same, the same issue arises. Well, he's manipulative, he's abusive, he uses me. But at the same time, he has all my dream qualities. Well, if I'm not being emotional... But I'm actually analyzing this according to my purpose, which is to be healthy, which is to heal in part, then I can recognize that this thought here shouldn't be uh, disregarded because this is holding me back from achieving my purpose to, to be able to move forward in my life, knowing that healing is a part of that. And so when we're purpose driven and we're analytical and we take the time we can hold the two opposing thoughts and we can see that this person is both of these things and therefore it is an unsustainable relationship. So to change this for ourselves, we need to start to embrace and sit with the reality that two things can be true at the same time. Both those who are conservative in their views and those who have liberal views can both be right about certain things at the same time. They can also both be wrong about certain things at the same time. We need to develop the ability to sit in that reality, to hold these two things as true, and then to strike a balance, to avoid thinking in extremes. Oh, these people must be right because that's how I was raised. And this is uh, the, uh, the race or the culture or the political beliefs that I, I identify with. And they all must be wrong. Let's hold the fact that they may have some perspectives and ideas that could be right as well as yours. So when we look again at this idea. Okay, we're supposed to be nice. Or we're not supposed to be nice. According to Roman, we're not supposed to be people pleasing, but we do need to be kind. They mean close to the same thing, but do they mean exactly the same thing? Well, they can be very similar because you can lend someone your pen or, or give someone money who's in need. And some people are doing it because they're being nice. And other people are doing it because they're being kind but they're not exactly the same thing, even though the action is the same, what's different? The motivation is different. Some people are doing it to be nice out of fear. They're trying to please people out of fear. And others are doing it to be kind. They're being generous. They're giving out of love. Same action, two different motives. So there we can see that these two things are not exactly the same thing. So if I talk about being kind, I am not talking about being nice. Do you have the ability to analyze things to that degree where you can pick apart the difference? Let's take some examples of where cognitive dissonance can come into play. How about a person who values health and fitness, but also enjoys eating junk food? Cognitive dissonance. The unhealthy way of dealing with that is to say, uh, well, um, they like junk food, so they just keep eating the junk food, and as a result, their health and their fitness declines and depletes. Or how about a smoker who knows the health risks of smoking and believes it's bad for you, but they continue to smoke? The unhealthy way of coping with the cognitive dissonance is to find rationalizations for their habit. It feels better that way. Well, you know, I'm just really stressed with work. Well, uh, I haven't had those problems and my father smoked for 30 years and he never had those problems. Well, the side effects aren't as bad as what they say. Well, well, excuses, rationalizations. Or a person who believes in animal rights but also believes in eating meat and they enjoy eating meat. And so they may rationalize 
based on what emotionally for them feels right, which can be maladaptive, or a person who believes that they should be friends with their children, but also believes that they need to discipline their children. This cognitive dissonance can cause them to go to extremes, uh, which confuses the children. Or a person who believes in equality, but then holds a bias of one particular race above another. They're in cognitive dissonance, and so they may rationalize, oh yeah, I, I'm not racist, or, or I think all people are equal, but then they're really actually holding these ideas that's, that one is particularly superior to another. Or a person who uh, values honesty, but they lie to avoid hurting people's feelings. And so they find themselves in cognitive dissonance and abandoning their value of honesty so that they can manage everyone's feelings out of fear. It's emotional. Or a person who believes in the importance of education, yet they don't attend university or they drop out of school. So in each of these situations, a person is experiencing cognitive dissonance because their beliefs or their values clash with their actions and behaviors. And so it creates for them a mental discomfort or a tension that motivates them to seek a consistency to make it all work by rationalizing or they'll give up their values or their beliefs. So how can we fix this for ourselves? How can we get ourselves out of cognitive dissonance? And, and what would that even look like? Well, that word dissonance uh, comes from the Latin, uh, which means sounding and apart. So when there are two notes that are being played that are clashing, it creates an unpleasant effect, and that is dissonance, that clashing of two notes. So the opposite of that is consonance, where there's a pleasing sound of two notes being played together. They are harmonizing. That is cognitive consonance. Or that's consonants, and so we want to create cognitive consonants. And so we'll introduce that new term, cognitive consonants. That's what you want to strive towards. Cognitive consonants, that is helping things to sound pleasing together, to harmonize. And so let's go through our examples and look at how we can create cognitive consonants with these things that are causing dissonance for these people in these examples. If you value health and fitness, but you enjoy eating junk food regularly, to create consonants, in this case, you would need to choose the superior value and stick to the value. How do you do that? By understanding your purpose and not being emotional in your decision making. And so you'll maybe sometimes, by being balanced, eat some junk food, but you will prioritize working out, health and fitness, and eating right. Or a smoker that knows the health risk, but they continue to smoke, they can create consonants by again prioritizing the value, which aligns with the purpose, and analyzing that it will not be for their good, but only to their detriment to continue smoking, so they change the behavior. And now they have cognitive consonants. A person who believes in animal rights but also enjoys eating meat uh, may, for instance, uh, recognize that the situation or the circumstances uh, really entail uh, if they are going against themselves or having a dissonance. So they may determine that for them, they would not allow an animal to be abused in their presence, in their household, in a situation that they control. Uh, but to simply eat meat is only to believe that it's okay uh, for an animal to die for the purpose of a human eating and surviving off of that animal. So they may conclude that for them, using an animal for the purpose of eating is not abuse of an animal. And what they are against is abuse of an animal, making an animal suffer needlessly. And so they're able to find a harmonization by saying that it's circumstantial and that it actually depends for them. A parent that is 
being friendly with the children and then they vacillate to wanting to discipline the children may just use a prioritization and prioritize their role as a parent first. And so they'll be friends when they can, but when it comes time to be a disciplinarian, they will stand firm and they will stand up and discipline the child in love. Or a person who believes in equality can create cognitive consonance uh, with their view that one race is superior to others by prioritizing the value, which was right, equality would ultimately harmonize with the purpose and who they want to become. And so they'll prioritize their ideas of equality over their ideas of the superiority of this particular race, and they will change their values, and they will diminish their valuing this particular race, and they will focus their mental energy in valuing all people equally, creating cognitive consonance. They've now made it harmonious for themselves. Someone who values honesty, but they're lying to avoid hurting people's feelings, will recognize that to create cognitive consonance, in their case, they'll need to prioritize honesty, that value. So it doesn't mean they always have to hurt people's feelings. They will do everything they can not to hurt someone's feelings, but not to the point where it will cause them to be dishonest and violate that value. So now they've prioritized it, put things in its proper place, and created cognitive consonance. And finally, a person who believes in education, uh, but they find themselves dropping out of school, may recognize that this can be harmonized and they can have cognitive consonance by seeing that it's circumstantial. So they would go to school, but their circumstances in this case don't allow them to go. And so they choose to not go at this time, to not attend university. And so now they have cognitive consonance and they can still be a person who values education, although they're not participating in the institution. So hopefully that helps you to be able to get this idea of cognitive consonance. It's important to understand it and to think about it in terms of music because uh, popular music engineers actually go into the sounds of each individually played track and instrument and they look for any clashes and they will change the instruments, change the recording or change the frequency of each line in order to make sure there are no clashes, there, are, there is no dissonance. So go into your thoughts, your actions, your beliefs and analyze what you need to change. Sometimes we need to remove things from our behavior like the smoker. Sometimes we need to prioritize things like the student. Uh, but, but whatever it is that we have to do, Let's make the moves. Let's move things around. Let's get things working all on different frequencies so that ultimately we can have consonance, harmony in our understanding. So, can we be kind and be nice? Well, we don't want to be nice because being nice comes from fear. That's people pleasing. So you can throw that away. Can we be firm and set boundaries? and be kind, well, these can harmonize because we'll back away from being aggressive to just being assertive and we'll back away from being passive and just bring ourselves to being able to take some action, which is again, being assertive. The middle ground between passive and aggressive is assertiveness. And so that's what we'll strive for, that middle ground, that balance, that harmonization between the two. So let's avoid extremes and let's strive toward cognitive consonants. Let me know if you have any questions about this.